When I made my first review, I asked you, my lovely audience, which show I should review next. The one that I kept seeing was Object Opposed. That name was popping up under every video. It was released on Halloween 2015 and it felt under my radar. Which is weird, as I remember many notable shows starting out at the same time of the year, such as The Object Show Movie, Object Lockdown, Paper Puppets Take 2, and of course, the first reboot of Object Terror. Hey, I said notable shows. I didn't say they were good. I hate you so much. The fact that Object Opposed is still going on to this day and I have never seen any of it made me curious. Am I being recommended a hidden gem? Or is it something bad? There's only one way to find out. This time, I'm going to do something different, as I'll be watching and reviewing all of these episodes. Let's not waste any time and let's begin with episode... 5? Where are the first 4 episodes? I'm looking at the official channel, official playlist, and I see nothing. Nada. Zero. You would think that he would at least put these episodes on unlisted or remade them, but they are straight up gone. He did the Thanos for the first 4 episodes and they are nowhere to be seen. Well, I couldn't review this show properly without seeing the first episode, so... I will guess we watch something else. <laughs> okay, fine. I'll look for the uploads. There, are you happy now? Maybe I will find out why they were originally deleted. The show starts with a classic new friendly in the background, which I know it is overused, but still a good piece of audio. Speaking of which, this show has no voice actors, meaning that all the lines are replaced by subtitles, which is fine since a lot of early PowerPoint shows have done that. The one complaint I have though is if you are using subtitles, why animate the lip sync? Regardless, let us introduce our cast of characters that live in this Windows XP background. We have Leafy from BFDI, female Mephone from II that masturbates in public. We got a tall can of beans, crazy filmmakers OC, Button, green sandpaper, bootleg boombox from Object Overload, bootleg soap from... Wait, what is that? Probably a glitch. Anyway, we have Yin Yang from Nanet Insanity, Gear from Object Insanity, and Puffball from Toati. You thought I was going to say BFDI, don't you? Yeah, aside from maybe two characters, the cast has been nicked from different shows. Again, many PowerPoint shows such as Object Craziness has characters from BFDI on the show, but he also had his own original characters. And again, it was early days in the community. Other than being low quality and not original, I don't see many big issues with this show. Oh my gosh. It worked. I can't believe it. This thing is Tiffany Jefferson, a 14 year old who's a host of a reality show where the main price is $1 million. There's so much wrong in this 30 seconds alone that requires a deeper breakdown. Number one. How did she connect to the world of objects? I, I know she says something about computer connected to their TV, but was never explained how it works properly. Number two, where did the 14 year old got 1 million dollars from and why she wanted to give them away to some random objects? And why would they need the money in the first place? Number three, I love how everyone's just standing here and accepting the fact that some random girl from different world is invading their place and immediately accept the offer of joining a reality show. Number 4. Tiffany is the worst looking character in object shows I have ever seen. Not because she's a human, because at this point, I don't really mind humans on object shows. In fact, they appear ever since BFDI. But her? She is not human-like. She looks like a mutant. First version of Alex from Random Object Battle Royale looked like a work of art compared to her. And 5. Her character design is inspired by the chick from Yandaris Simulator. Yes, the game created by the Camp Chalice guy. The episode barely started and we already have some major red flags. Anyway, after getting past of this thing, we got our first challenge. 10 minutes later. 
I guess the challenge is off. Oh, never mind. What's the point of the time card if we're not going to change the scene? First challenge is to answer her test from school. Best and fastest two are going to be team captain. And our host, instead of supervising, went to the bathroom. Which resulted in a first casualty of the series. Then we have... Uh, Tiffany sitting in a toilet. Well, at least she's urinating rather than doing the number two. Much better. She's taking a shit. An object show where the character is taking a shit. And remember, she is 14. After seeing this, we got our captains, Gear and Sticky Ball. During teammate speaking, we found out that Taoism and Yin Yang from II are the same. So you're saying that Taoism and Yin Yang from Inanimate Insanity are basically the same person? I mean, at least they're being honest about it. Moving to the next challenge, the Relay Race from Episode 8 of BFDI. How do I know this? Because Tiffany herself said it. It's like BFDI the 8th episode. So start now. Also, again, she's 14. Calm down with the panty shots. As far as the challenge itself, nothing really happened. Armless fuckers lost, meaning that they're up for elimination. Not a good first impression for the episode, if I said so myself. Ah, right, right, sorry about that. Episode starts with a recap from the previous episode. Not necessarily a bad idea, but the execution of it is awful. You can tell it was done in one go after the creator of the show messed up a line. Okay, so, well, the contest was, I mean, the challenges, uh, wait, no, I mean... Past this recap, we found out that Tiffany's parents are in America, while she is by herself in Japan. My parents and my brother are back at the United States of America. I'm in Japan. I'll be staying here until high school is over. Excuse me, but what the fuck? We also find out that she can put stuff through her computer, so they arrive on the other side. Like in BFB, but much earlier. This will help with elimination, which receives zero votes? Oh no. I shouldn't be laughing, but how do you even achieve that? Since no one voted, opposing team will vote someone out. Right after this elimination songs. It's time for the elimination. Who's gonna be eliminated? We don't know yet. But let's find out at the elimination. Boy, elimination. this gives me objects at war vibes. Time. Elimination, it's time. Elimination, time, it's. Right after they kicked off Sponge to TLC, contestants must make gelatin, which again, it's like that change from VFDI, but with gelatin instead of cake. Heck, they even copied the same scene. Acknowledging the issue doesn't solve the issue. Speaking of which, there's another problem I have noticed while watching this show. Other than that 3D model. I'm going to play this clip so you will know what I have in mind. I can say what the second contest is going to be. The second contest is a gelatin contest. Each contestant will make a gelatin, so it's like I'm breaking up the teams. I'll be the first judge, and my best friend will be the second judge. There won't be a third judge. The team that has the most points from us will win, the other team will be up for elimination. And P.S. While gelatin may not seem like a difficult dish to make, adding too much water can leave the gelatin watery, while too little water can leave the gelatin tough. Whether you want to make strawberry, grape, orange, watermelon, or any other type of gelatin, the instructions are the same. I'll be right back, you have 30 minutes. Every time there's a challenge, host explains it for a long time and gives so much unnecessary information that will not be brought up in the challenge. Not only this makes the episode too long, but also it's so boring to listen to. She could have just said that the next challenge is to make gelatins, top scoring team will win, me and my friend will be the judge, go. There. See how quick that was? Moving on, we have yet another useless time lapse, and we have yet another nightmare fuel. She looks even worse than Tiffany, and they all wear skimpy outfits. Again, Tiffany is 14 years old. 
After reviewing all the gelatins in 70 seconds, <laughs> judges refuses to eat Ying Yang, I mean Taoism's jelly, until they consume it and give it a perfect score. Also gotta love this animation. <laughs> After the challenge, it was revealed that Gear cheated in the challenge and he was... not punished. It was just brushed off and nothing happened. His team wins regardless and the episode ends with Caitlyn getting the shits while taking off all of her clothes. I'm sorry, what? DISGUSTING! First 3 minutes of the episode is a recap. I'm not even kidding, it's 3 minutes of creator explaining everything that happened in the episode and even correcting his mistakes. When judging started, Gear was the first person. It was supposed to be Flashlight, cause Flashlight starts with an F and Gear starts with a G and F comes before G, so yeah, my mistake. And complaining that his elimination music is shit. My elimination theme might not be as good, but that's what I got for now. Episode starts with Taoism getting the win token from his performance and being asked why he's all of a sudden red and green only to be disregarded in favor of watching this boogeyman over here. Oh look, Tiffany changed her design. And she brought another abomination with her. This time called Little Tori Tanner, a life-size doll that she made two years ago. Does she serve any purpose? If by that you've been giving you a gag reflex, then yes, she's doing a pretty good job. Oh look, two votes, a new record. Sadly, two people received a vote each, meaning we have a tiebreaker. AKA kicking a ball on a Gmod fashion. Go. Sticky Ball got smacked, meaning that radio is getting sent to TLC. By mighty rectangle of doom. And we have Ice Cube killing Blocky. I don't remember seeing that in BFDI. Next challenge is a snowball fight. Gear has been sent to Armor's Losers, meaning that Phone might get some satisfying retribution for the first episode. Then we have an ad in the mid challenge where Inadmin inside the bomb wants to commit amputation. Back to the challenge, and of course, Fon doesn't get a comeuppance, and she gets leathered by gear. And so is everyone on her team, meaning they're up for elimination, except for gear, who, despite being in that team for this challenge, gets an immunity. Episode ends with Daru, creator of OO, asking to recommend challenge, and. Wait, it can't be over. There's still almost 5 more minutes to this episode. Is there an error to this video? No, it's worse. It's 5 minutes of this figured 14 year old getting ready for Christmas. With panty shots and having Tiffany taking a bath. They're all 14 years old. So this nearly 15 minutes long episode has 3 minutes of recap. 5 minutes of this bullshit. 30 second intro, meaning that the actual object show part of the show is 6 minutes long. Unbelievable. Finally, they took a hopefully a never ending nap and we have Santa Claus. Really? The only character that is not obese is the person that is known for being fat. That's the fittest Santa I have ever seen since the Santa from the Rise of the Guardians. Shit, he can't even break dance. What am I watching? The good news is, the recap is shorter by a minute. Even better news, one of the living horrors is going back to the closet. So it's just Tiffany and... Oh no, I really need to poop. Really? This time is contestants voting and they all agreed to get Ying Yang out and get roasted by Mrs. Shitter. And before I eliminate you, there's something I want to say. Yang, nobody likes you because you're a jerk. Ying. You are not any better. You just allow Yang to do whatever he wants. You are too lazy. You two are both idiots. At least now we're on final 7, meaning that we're getting close to the finale. Which is what I would say if they didn't add two more inanimate insanity rejects. Cookie and Cherries. Hey, as long as the nose battle for gold cherry, I'm cool. The next challenge is joined with four crayons. Cookie has been added to armless a -holes, while cherries go to the winners. And slowly we have swearing. I could care less about swearing and censoring in object shows, but why add censorship sound for a character that doesn't have a voice actor? Despite that, cherries win for their team, and we have more post-credit stuff with Tiffany. 
She complains about Sticky Ball team losing all the time. In her bikini. She is... Okay, you get the point. Suddenly, she receives the email from the object company, where they want to kick her off as the host, because humans shouldn't be hosting an object shows. Finally! A rational decision on this show. But first, she needs to receive more leaves than stays. Will she receive that? There's only one way to find out. Yes! Tiffany's gone! Tiffany's gone! Ah! Our new host, Microphone, because we need another microphone host, explains why Tiffany's gone and asks who's up for elimination. Hey there, is the creator of the swear show here. I'm in the middle of editing when I just found out something interesting. When I've downloaded episode 5 from Daryl's channel, I've seen to received an unedited version of this episode. What I mean by that is that the episode was like cut out by the YouTube editor scene. In the current video, when it gets to the microphones explaining, it gets to the intro. But in the full version? <sighs> We've got more Tiffany stuff. So I think it will be fair to cover it as well. She waits impatiently for the results, while of course, taking a dump. <laughs> I didn't add those sound effects, by the way. To no one's surprises, she received more leaves than stays, which resulted in the most suitable song being played in the background. I have more leaves than stays? No, this can't be happening. She needed to find a host, when suddenly, microphone came in and asked if he can be a new host. Tiffany agreed on the account that she can be a producer. She also called Kaylin because this episode wasn't creepy enough. And that's how microphone got the job. Cookie tried to bamboozle him, but in the end it didn't work, and one of them, in this case Puffball, is getting promoted to the viewer status. At the first glance, the show seems to improve as they got rid of the useless recap, demonic host, and have better character interaction, so it seems that show might get good, right? Well, not really. There are still scenes that drags out so much, like the elimination where it takes over 2 minutes to get rid of something while we have AI characters appearing, as well as useless time lapses. The next labor, I mean challenge, is to clean the already clean car. And original soap kicked imposter soap in the arse. That's the only interesting thing that happened in this episode. They didn't even show them cleaning the car. Why the fuck you lying? Why you always lying? Mm, oh my god! Stop lying. Episode 6 of BFDI starts with three smarters. Wait a second, am I watching a right show? Oh, there's our host. Hey, at least that's the closest thing this show would be to BFDI. After Ruby blew up microphone scar, we get an audio from BFDI episode. Ruby, way to ruin everything like again. Ruby, stop making mistakes. Sorry. And microphone being sent back to inanimate insanity. This whole show feels like a giant fanfic. Three minutes of this later, we finally have our illumination, and it looks like we have yet another improvement. The lip syncing is gone, and we have new illumination song. Even illumination got to the point, and they finally got rid of gear. Too bad the challenges are still short and not memorable, as the diamond mining took only a minute. And we are going to have a rejoin. Oh joy. Not a memorable episode, but at least it shows some improvements. Can't wait to see what episode 7 is going to bring. Well, there is no episode 7. We have episode 7 and a half, but it's just a clip show. Luckily, someone will re-upload episode 7, but it is not in a good quality both video quality wise and show wise. You might say that I'm being too harsh when I didn't even see it, but no. I can already tell this is going to be awful from the very first frame. He brought Tiffany back! Why? His viewers were so happy that she disappeared and thought that the show would slowly improve. Instead, he had to add her for 
whatever reasons. Ugh, I hate to say this, but there's only one way to find out. Fuck. I already had a hard time watching this show, but the audio quality just makes it even worse. From what I've gathered, Tiffany is going to bring her doll back to life. A doll which is 10 years old and has ginormous tits. But what about the objects? Well, Ying Yang rejoined and our host couldn't think of any challenges. And then he gets a call from Tiffany. That lasts over 3 hours. So, other than seeing the Piku recolored as an actual poop, nothing really happened. Until the second half when Tiffany asks Cherries and Ying Yang to drink the potion so they can be teleported to the real life world where they could celebrate an anniversary of her friendship. I'm sorry, did I read that right? Yeah, the rest of this episode is just a party at her place, with humanized Cherries and Ying Yang who look the most normal out of them all. They actually resemble actual human beings. Wait a second, don't tell me. Are they going to? Change the scene, change the scene! No! Not in the toilet! I mean object stuff! No! Before I tackle the second half of the show, yes, we're halfway there, I'm going to give a quick random of the first half. I think we all know why this show has such a horrific reputation. There's nothing wrong with having human on an object show. That is not a problem. And the idea of the human in the real world connecting to the world of objects is quite neat. The problem appears with the character model, specifically for all the girls. All males are being presented as normal, while all the girls are just overly chubby with huge breasts. I'm not saying it's a fetish thing, but I think Daryl has realized why people were making fun of this show, and to clarify, he is on a spectrum, so it's, it is a great news that he realized why having underage obese girls taking shits in their bikinis are not suitable for an object show targeted at younger demographic. But even without Tiffany, the show feels very forgettable. No one, aside from Taoism, has a memorable character trait. And even with Taoism, he's a literal copycat of Yin Yang. Other than that, the show is just boring. Only thing I remember was Legos OC appearing in episode 7 and... Wait a second... It all makes sense now! I love you! Can it all make sense now? Yes, it all makes sense now! Oh, 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 oh. We're into the second half and it's going to be a long watch. Mostly due to episodes being 20 minutes long. But there's a reason why I'm stopped here. Two to be exact. Reason 1. The show is fully animated. And reason 2. It is voice acted. I have a feeling this will be a turning point to this series. OMG, girl! Your photo is unbelievable! I spoke too soon. I don't have a favorite number, I really don't. New Era starts off with Yin Yang talking with new character, Girly Ball. The most creative name of them all. She realizes that he had a double personality after they explained it for 30 seconds. You didn't know that. Well, aren't you stupid? Hey, not everyone knows that we're two personalities. Well, they should. Look at us. I have a white side and you have a black side. So there's no way that anyone would think that we're just one. Seems like the issue of overly explaining things is still present here. Speaking of issues, fat fucks are still here. And now since we have voice acting, I might address another small issue. Hey Wei, something's different about you. No, not the monotone dialogue, but the pronunciation of Taoism. Everyone seems to refer to him as Tao. Taoism. 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 Even though the US pronunciation of it is Dao. But I know in UK it's Tao, but they are not from UK. They are from America, so it should be Dao. But maybe I am wrong because my English is not the greatest as well. Girly Ball brings the corpses of Yin Yang and we have full length explanation of what happened. The black and white side were arguing with each other about people thinking that there's two personalities or not. 
Thank goodness for subtitles. And as much as I don't like Taoism, he's spinning facts right here. No girl would want to be with you. And nobody would want to be with you. I mean, what kind of f boy would want to hang out with a f girl like your f self? Because of this, he won the prize, a basketball. And remember how Tiffany was upset at Gear lying about scores? Well, she seems to be okay with doing that herself and lying about the results, which in the end, it was just to pad out the time. Speaking of padding out the time, we have a minute long scene where two fatties are leaving and wanted to be sisters while all the objects are watching. I kept thinking that you could be my younger sister, even though you were a bit taller than me. At first I was two years older than you, but now I'm five years, and we're the same height, so that works out perfectly. Actually, make that being four years older, because you're 15 and I'm 11. Tiffany and I found out that I'm age 11 instead of 10 last night. Wow, that's interesting. On the bright side, this is the last time we're going to see them and Tiffany in this episode. Oh yeah, there are objects in this object show. This time we have a sculpture challenge, where contestants must make the best sculpture in 24 hours. At least that's what I understood from this rambling. Team gets a boulder, two ladders, and two sets of sculpting tools. However, it was supposed to be four for each team, but I only bought four personally, and I don't think there's time to buy four more. And we have more overly explaining things that happened a seconds ago, and I, I microphone beat the living shit out of the another microphone. For a free minutes we have... nothing. No conflicts, no fun interactions, just them sculpting and panning to the recovery center. The chairs decided to drop the app for some reason on flashlight, causing it to explode. Oh no. I don't think it works like that. Regardless, they are up for elimination, and episode 8 ends with Cherries trying to pick a fight with God. Yeah, f you, Sky. I don't wanna go through with this. I'll give you a cookie if you do. Deal! Before you watch this video, I know that some of you are going to say that this is a ripoff, but to tell you now, some of the scenes that you might find familiar are just references. Oh, so Leaf is not a ripoff of Leafy, and Taoism is not a ripoff of Yin Yang. It's just a reference, so it's okay. There's a difference between referencing something and ripping something off. Reference is the action of mentioning or alluding to something, such as quoting a famous movie scene, or having a character look like in the background or something. Ripping off, or copying in this case, is a thing made to be similar or identical to another, like leaf, cherries, and Taoism. In other words, you're kind of ripping off from other shows. Moving on, we have a recap which thankfully lasts only a minute, and nothing noteworthy really happens, other than cherries ranting and swearing for 4 minutes and. Every boy me always has to act retarded. I'm sorry, what? He comes up with these retarded pranks. Was Lego responsible for writing in this episode or something? She made the show awesome, but now it just sucks because she's replaced with this n What? Okay, there was no reason on saying any of that at all. We never told you girls, so why are you telling us guys, huh? She called you the N-word, and you're more upset about her disrespecting boys? And the scene goes on and on. It's not even funny in a bad way, like in Robber. It's just boring as, I don't know, someone talking about paintbrushes. After 5 minutes, Cherry finally got folded off, and should be sent off to... You know, for a retard like yourself? Oh come on! He should have warned the viewers that there's going to be profanities, rather than him saying that this show has references. After 3 more minutes of this rambling bitch fest, Cherry finally got sent to totally not TLC. I should have done this earlier. Two words right of my mouth. Next challenge is the maze from II. Once again, everything is explained in more details than it should, but at least we're into the merge. Thank goodness. And while you're going through the maze, there are many areas you can go through. I was gonna find a place that has the nearest computer and print you guys maps, but I was thinking that'd be too easy. And while you're going through the maze, finding the center, just have you know, there are some safe areas. Okay, we get it. It's a maze. And everyone's walking. And walking. And walking. And hey, a cool scene. And you have more talking. And more walking. And the time lapses of explaining things. Gosh, even traps are boring. Anyway, fun one. And flashlight is being put in the box. Now get in the box.
No. Flashlight. Microphone. Flashlight, get in the box now. Mike, I said no. Okay. That's how it's gonna be? Fine. I didn't want to have to do this, but... Get in there! Ow! Hey, let me out! Microphone, this isn't funny! You would think that Object Opposed would get better without Tiffany, but somehow this episode was the worst out of them all. Not only was this boring, but the elimination scene was just horrendous. Can we stop having N-words in the Object shows, please? Seriously, this is the third time I've seen the N-word in the Object show. Let's get started. Number 10! Elimination area got an upgrade. The same thing cannot be said about writing. And did he seriously mess up a line again? Let's just... Wait, what should I do again? Display the votes. And Flashlight received 145 votes, which is not a record, but it's the most votes out of everyone. So that means she's eliminated, which really isn't surprising at all. I mean, you did... We get it, move so, on. So why would anyone be surprised? But hey, everybody cheese. And if I were you, I'd we get do it. the same thing. And now that I think of it... Shut up and get to the point! Oh great, another leafy recolor. What's next? Soap leafy? She wants to join Object the Pose, while the host can't tell the difference between pencil and the paper. And yes, you can have my autograph. Good thing I came prepared with a paper and pencil. I'm 50 minutes in and I've barely covered anything in this episode. Well, that's because nothing interesting is happening. This episode literally gives me nothing to work with. I've never been so bored from watching an object show. That changes though when microphone got the meltdown. That's it! Come here! What? Hey! Let me out! Let me out! Shut up! Leaf has won. Gosh, I wish they would bring back Tiffany back. On second thoughts, don't! <laughs> This episode can be summed up with this comment from Fusion Animations. Episode at 20 minutes. Challenge ends at 10 minute mark. Challenge takes up less than 2 minutes. 4 minutes of stuff after the credits. First 5 minutes is about that shitty thing that Leaf made and Ying Yang throw it in the water. Because it was shit. Does it really need 5 minutes? And microphone is speaking Spanish because... Tacos. As you can see, esta a salvo, tres uno. Cookie got eliminated from this lifeless place. Seriously, wh why is everything black and white? What happened to the colors? Gosh, it's another race. And this explanation takes ages. The person that's however the fastest, or in other words, goes through the finish line before everyone else wins immunity. Not to mention, this challenge is based off the game we saw after we did the 10th challenge. Sop won the race, and as his reward, won the immunity and kick in the balls from Mephone. HOLY SH! That's the second time I got kicked there! Uh, you're a microphone who hosts a show called Object of Pose, right? Ugh, we're doing this again? But anyways, I'm Baseball and this is my friend Dynamite. That's a bump, not a dynamite. Bump, dynamite. Bump, dynamite. Bump, dynamite. Filled with extreme energy. Actually, I'm a softball and that doesn't make- Well, hold up. Why is your name Baseball? <laughs> That's what End this episode. Well, that's stupid. Your mom and dad don't know the difference between a softball and a baseball. How dumb! You know, Please I'm starting end to this episode. Then leave, retard. Was this to me or to the baseball? Dude, lighten up. Oh, so now you're saying I'm too black? What am I watching? Why is there so much racial tension on this object show? Well, the episode ends with four minutes. I'm not joking. Four minutes of explaining what Ying Yang is made of. And Koso won the motherfucker. I knew it! I knew it all along! It's a good thing he's eliminated, cause screw that motherfucker! Number 12, cock. Another five minutes of boredom to start up with this episode. I think I noticed the pattern here. Great, Dom and Dumber have returned. Are we getting yet another R word? Hopefully not. Sticky Ball got eliminated, however it turns out that Daoism received more votes, meaning he fucked over a contestant to keep Ying Yang ripoff afloat. Then again, all these characters have a personality of a soil, so I don't think it's a big loss. Daoism's actually the one eliminated while Gel Ball's the one safe, but because Gel Ball's already gone, Daoism is managed safe. So this secret is only between you and me, alright? Okay. 
rest of these idiots must make a snowman and we have even more dragging out of the scene. Making a snowman is easy. Yes, as a young child it does. But once you actually do it, you realize it's not. I mean, it sounds easy, yes it does. Except it's not. It's very hard. I mean, trying to get the snowballs to be perfect and trying to stack We get it! They have to make a snowball! Other. Speaking of which, if your snowman is very small, that will not count. And once you're making your snowballs, make sure you ah! have at least and no more than two, which is pretty much saying only have two because stacking three on top of each other may be kind of difficult and it may take up too much snow while you're trying to make the three snowballs. But if you're Shut managed to do up! that, that's great. Now, if you have less than two snowballs, which is basically one snowball, that will totally not count because you're basically just doing the head. Who explains the snowball making challenge in 90 seconds? This feels like an essay where you have to write at least 200 words, but you run out of things to say so you start waffling about useless garbage. We finally get to see contestants making snow. What is happening? Oh no. Oh no, not this again. Yes, she is back, but only in a text form and for a fraction of the time. After this conversation, Microphone wants to beat this bleep out of Chaco Brothers, only to be stopped by phone call from you know who. That lasts 4 minutes. Why don't you want them to join the game? Because Object of Paul's already has enough contestants. People are always asking me that. The show does not need any more. Now for those other people on those other shows, they can do whatever they want. Because it's their show. And because this is my show, well... Actually, it's your show because you're. Hey, isn't there a challenge you're happening? Also the one that came up with it, but because I'm hosting it, I make the rules. Besides, you wanted to be a producer more than you wanted to be a host, so there you go. And even though you're considered the producer and you're the one that allowed Get me to over host with this show, you can't just fire me. Just Look at this kid's friendly image. Microphone is shocked that people think he is mean after threatening to beat up these two, calling them our slurs and buttering another leafy recaller. But don't you go anywhere, cause after I take this call, I'm gonna kill you. To make it up to them, Baseball and Bob officially join the game. Ying Yang wins again, and Bifon is throwing a fit. Ugh, this is so outrageous. I mean, the immunity should go to me. But no, Mike f***ing gives it to Tyrosim. Oh, this makes me so mad. I can just tear this tree down by bark by bark. Bit by bit, marker by marker, atom by atom! This can't be good. Yay, more characters. This time we have 4S, who is Microphone's assistant and an expert on dragging the scene. It's a her, and not anymore. In fact, now you even talk to each other. <sighs> I don't want to talk about it right now. The prizes are yo-yo cakes, or as Mike said, yo-yo cake. And Font got eliminated and... I can't say I'm surprised though. I mean, you were aggressive last episode saying that you should have been the one winning immunity. Is this scene still going? Them. Don't you know that you're the only contestant that won the most immunity so far? Give somebody else a chance. Not to mention on both eliminations, I gave you ultimate prizes. On the first one, I gave How you much two of this is and Four a minutes. So is Taoism your friend? Uh, yes, he is. Is SB your friend? Yes. Is Leaf your friend? You know that already. Just making sure. Is Dynamite your friend? Yeah, go ask about her address or bank details or her Steam ID. After this is done, the final five are in a helicopter where they have to swim to the shore. So they swim, and swim, and swim. I'll be honest, I've skipped majority of this episode because nothing has happened. No slurs, no Tiffany, no animations errors. You know, now that I think about it, this show is surprisingly consistent when it comes to animation. It is not BFB level good, but it's still good. And Daryl showed to improve in this aspect every episode. And considering that he animates all of this by himself, he's doing a bloody good job. In the end, baseball won, so we can pick a challenge for the next episode. And I'm happy. 
because I'm almost done watching this show. Jesus fucking Christ, it's about time! There it is, final episode. For now. Once again, we have four minutes of boredom, but this time followed by a minute of murder time, fun time. The viewers picked cake baking challenge, but of course it is, you know, at this point I'm just repeating myself and I apologize. But what can I say about this? Bolt 182, which is 5 volts apart, is a car racing contest. So instead of getting actual race cars because they're obviously expensive, the way this challenge Don't care, is didn't ask, cry about it, stay mad, get real L mold seed cope. You know how I can tell this episode's gonna be boring? Even Daryl got bored of animating it, and he just put a moment after moment screen for three minutes. Fancy and wonderful design too. It's a 10. 10 too. 8, 7, 8, hmm, 9. The winner of this challenge is Bomb, and we have rejoining auditions. Nothing special, except for Cherry spooling a YouTube apology video. For you both, we want to say... That we're really sorry. We and it ended. Boy, these last two episodes were nothing burgers. There you go. All episodes of Objects Opposed have been viewed. I really have mixed feelings about this. On one hand, Daryl did a great job on making the entire show by himself for 14 episodes. Writing, animating, and even making music for it. When it comes to audio and animation, he seems to be improving on this aspect every day. Aside from 3D animation, which leads to my next point. Tiffany is without a doubt the most cursed character in any object show I have ever seen. Not just her design, but also her actions are very disturbing. Luckily, Kratom listened to the negative feedback and after 4 episodes, he removed her completely. Granted, he still put her in episode 7, 8 and 12, but episode 7 is deleted and in episode 8 and 12, it was just a short appearances. And while he listened to the feedback about Tiffany, he doesn't really listen to what people say about writing, which is show's biggest issue. Sometimes it's bad due to how offensive the dialogue is for no reasons, while dropping multiple uncensored arslers and even dropping the n-word, and for majority of the time, it's just boring. Everything is explained with every single detail, just to drag out the length of the episodes, when some of the dialogue could just be end in a minute or less. Boring shows are worse than the bad shows, cause in the bad shows like Object Terror and Battle for the Object Kingdom, you remember all the bad scenes, dialogue and characters and taking, and taking the piss out of them. In boring shows, you don't remember anything, making this show forgettable and not even fun to meme it. It started off as a bad show, but after episode 8, it almost put me to sleep. One thing that could improve this show majorly is if Dallin had someone to look over the script and trim down the fatty dialogues, making his show less boring. I did that for Last Object Standing and so did many people. There are many talented people in this community that are willing to help, so no need to feel bad about asking it to make Object or Pose not so boring. Will he listen though? Only the time will tell. I told you to already, you can't be contestants, and this is the third time I had to tell you that. You know what that does, I'm gonna beat the f*** out of you too. Stand still. I'm gonna deal with you two later, but don't you go anywhere, cause after I take this call, I'm gonna kill you.